We've been talking about the extent of our victory and the defeat of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we spoke about different levels where the enemy has been defeated. And we as a church, as a body of Christ, we need to stand on that victory. And sometimes the enemy attacks you from different levels. So every level he comes in, you need to know your stand. You know, if he goes into the spirit realm, the Bible says the name of Jesus Christ is great and is above any other name. In the demonic realm, in the heavenly realms, the natural realm, you know, in heaven, on earth, in the earth below, which represent the demonic realm. So if he comes and threatens you by something that has a bigger name, some of you don't understand. When you go around your life and with your business, and people do what we call name dropping. They, they threaten you. They intimidate you to say, I know so and so. They mention the name. You also have the name. You have to speak out the name. So he will intimidate you to say, you know, this demon, the name of this demon, this is what it means. You say, well, there is a name above that demon. There's this sickness or disease. The moment they mention its name, you go like this. COVID and, you know, during the time of COVID, people elevated it above the name of Jesus. <laughs> At the moment you cough, they say COVID. They couldn't say Jesus. They could, they could say, oh, COVID. They couldn't even say Jesus. So we end up forgetting our victory. So we spoke about different levels that at the judicial level, we won. At the warfare level, at the execution level, at the disease level, death level, temptation level, the deception level, at the altar level, doctrinal level, at the angelic level, at the seat level, at the blood level, at the name level. And I think the last time I did the seat level, isn't it? Today I want to deal with the rank level. The rank level. Next, I will talk about the keys level, and the realms level, and the affirmation level, the word level, the prayer level, and the kingdom level. We defeated him at these levels. So today, I want to go back and regroup on ranking. I've shared this, but I want to bring everything together today. Can I get your amen? amen? This thing of rank needs to come in, and we need to understand. We need to understand who we are and what we are. We need to understand our victory very, very well. We spoke that according to the book of Ephesians, you have a high rank. You have a high rank. In the book of Ephesians 1, Jesus Christ has got the highest rank. In the book of Psalm 2, from verse number 6 and 7, come messenger, it says that the devil has been deranked. He was stripped of his rank. When you read it also in Colossians 2, verse 13 till 15, he was stripped of his authority. Rank represent authority. I want you to write that one down. Rank represent authority. We have a high rank. So we spoke that our rank is high. Our rank is judicial. You can adjudicate things. Demonic spirits do understand what it means to to have judicial authority. You have judicial authority over demons. And you can legislate over territories. We can take territories on behalf of the Lord Jesus Christ. We can kick out demons. As I was sharing during the Lord, when I was taking up the offering, went to a place, kick out those sangomas there. Remember, they, they were altars there. That place was, an, it, was a, it was a demonic, it was an ungodly altar. But we went there and prayed, and lives, lives were saved in that space. Lives were built. Careers were built, you know. 
And we spoke that our ranking has got royal authority. It comes from royalty. Because God, our Father, Jesus Christ, the King, they are ro royal. And we said that it is indicative of your mantle, what you carry. Your rank shows up in the spirit, in the realm of the spirit. When the sons of Sceva were trying to kick out demons, the demons asked them, who are you? Jesus we know, Paul we know. So in the streets of, of, of realms, you are known or you are unknown. Who are you? The demons understood that Paul was known because of his rank. They recognize his rank. Jesus Christ in the book of Mark 5 entered into a region. And the demon came running and the Bible says they worshipped him. And he asked, that person was demonized, how many are you? And they said we are a legion. They recognized the rank. Everybody else entered that region. But they never went to go and, and bow themselves to, to anyone except when the Lord Jesus Christ came. When you read it in, in the book of Matthew, actually the demon said, we know who you are, son of God. And he rebuked them because he didn't want them to be the ones that will indicate his identity. Because once demon can say, this one is the son of God, this one is not the son of God, we will end up believing when they say to about any man and woman of God. This is not a man of God. This is not a woman of God. So Jesus didn't want to leave precedence or a pattern of demons identifying us. But they recognize your rank. Amen. Remember in the book of, of Acts 16, as, as, as Paul and Silas were preaching, a lady with the spirit of Python came and said, these are the servants of the Most High God. The Bible says for several days until Paul was insinuated and rebuked that spirit out. Because demons are not supposed to bring an identity of anyone, any child of God. They can come, we know you. Because they recognize your rank. But they should not be the one that will give you a voice of affirmation. And don't listen to demons. That's why I don't like to interpret them out. Because what, what is the truth that demon can speak? Nothing. Their father is the father of lies. I, I saw a post on Facebook of a pastor I knew. He had someone who came to that church on Wednesday service. And that person was delivered of demons. This person went to another church on Sunday. They were, they were delivering her from demons. And she started, they said, talk, talk, talk to the demons. said, no, I was at Pastor Sorenso's church. We use him. He works with us. And it was in a public platform. It was so offensive. Then I said to this pastor, the Holy Spirit is called the spirit of truth, not demons. Now, all of a sudden, people started to look at this pastor in Bluefinden as if he, he is from the occultic. It's not good. I don't, like, I don't like to interview demons unless the spirit of God binds them with the court of truth. Then they will be forced to say what was the assignment in the life of the person that they have uh, um, um, imprisoned and demonized and oppressed. All right? It is indicative of your mental. It carries angelic validation. We look at this one in the book of Daniel, right through the book of Daniel. Daniel 9, Daniel 10, we see the angels coming to inform him of things of real arms. But the one, the Old Testament people cannot have a contact and interaction with the real arms more than we do. They did not have the keys. That's why. Daniel was not invited to participate in the war. He was told about the war. And the angel says in Daniel 10, I'm going back. He says, I left Michael fighting. I left Michael with the kings of Persia. And then I'm going back to fight. But in the New Testament, Paul says, we war against we wrestle against because we have been given the keys. So your life is not about the things you contend in the natural realm. 
It's also about the things you contend with in the spirit realm. And, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to dwell a little bit deeper in how do we warfare in the marine realm. Because all, most of us, more than 90% of your life is actually controlled there if you are not aware of the level of your battlefield and your warfare. Things are done there. And I said to someone, we need to interact with the, with the marine world. He said, hey, hey, now you are introducing occulty. I said, hey, when? Jesus said, go there, pick up the fish and take out the money. Some of you, your money is in the fish that's there. You are praying the spirit. It's not in the spirit, it's there. Oh, my goodness. Go and look at the miracles of Jesus. How many miracles that had to deal with the marine realm? In the beginning, God said, I give you authority, have dominion over the fish of the sea. What is a sea? It's a, it's a realm. You must be born again in water, marine, and in spirit. Oh, now you only deal with the spirit. I'm bringing order. We will deal with that, and I'm going to take time to deal with that. So that you are, every time people mention marine, you get fear. No, you have to be excited. Because the waters and the, and the mountains, they belong to us. We need to redeem the marine realm. Nature, including the marine, is waiting for the suns. The marine realm it is, is groaning, is waiting for the sons to manifest and deliver it also from the one who is sitting in the heart of the sea. We rebuke the devil everywhere except from the heart of the sea. He's free to kill and capsize titanics and everything. He can kill because we are not occupying that space. It says they do business in deep waters. Hey. And when you enter that space, your rank is also recognized. Jesus was on a boat and the marine beast raised the storm. Jesus was sleeping and resting. He did not wake up by himself. He was awoken by others who did not understand the authority over the marine. When he has rebuked this spirit, they asked a question, what manner of man is this? The question is, what manner of men do we have and women in these days? Some of you, by the time we go to the sea, your morning sickness is bad. You can't even enjoy. Anybody who knows what I'm talking about. We went in 2018 at the cruise. There were people who were vomiting for two, three days because the sea goes like this. So it affected their benefit. <laughs> Rebuke. <laughs> but Salwan, I know I'm talking about. There is someone here, I can't mention my name. Every time we're organizing the trip, the guy was not going. He's sitting here, he knows himself. <laughs> Him and water are not friends. So, <laughs> I'm all about you today. I cannot mention We had to keep on convincing the guy. And you know what? When we went there, can I not have a talk of hell? He enjoyed for all, more than all of us. Wherever there was a party, he was there. Some of you, the moment a certain level of grace comes on, you start flying. You understand authority. When planes are going through turbulence, you know your authority. You don't know your authority until there is a big turbulence you start to rebuke. 
what you don't see, but is there. <clears throat> My first flight it was to East London. It was a bed one. It was a bed, bed one. Bed. But the Lord was good. We spoke that your ranking is realm bound and realm based. Not in every realm your rank is high. There are certain realms when you enter, you enter the first level. You don't move from this realm at the highest rank, then you go to another one with the highest rank. No. From this, this realm, you might enter another realm where your rank is at its lowest level and you have to rise within that realm. All right. A policeman here in South Africa is a captain. He goes to America. He's not a captain. He's not recognized by the system of that country. A captain, a Navy captain in the ship is not a, a captain of the flight. It does not correspond and translate. So we grow when you enter a certain realm. You grow from start in that realm. There are people that carry different mantles. They've got different graces. One guy is a pastor, but he's got grace to have business. Another one is a purely a pastor. He can't handle business, but he has grace to raise business people. And another guy can do politics and ministry. They find themselves in, in this, in, like for example, Reverend Mishwe is in politics, but he's also pastoring. Reverend French Chikani was pastoring and was also in the office of the presidency. So there are people that carry different mantles. So he will enter the office of the, of the president, Reverend Chikani, and he, I think he was... Um, uh, he was in the office of the president. I just forgot his uh, office. He was the writer general. Yes, thank you. But he will go to the church and minister. But he will enter the police station. They will not salute him. Because his rank in the office of the president did not translate to another department or another ministry. Are we together, eh? So someone can carry the ministry of healing, but that doesn't mean he's carrying an apostolic and prophetic mantles in his life. Other people, they carry ranking for cities. Others, their ranking is for nations. Others is for the, just the local church. And sometimes people make a mistake in the local church where they are ranking is recognized and is functional. They make a mistake to launch themselves into a city on a larger scale. And then it doesn't work and they wonder why. It's because you don't understand the extent of your rank. Right? We spoke what determines also your rank. Is this determined by your calling? It is determined by your vision or your dream. What God has shown you. You see, when Peter was arrested, in the book of Acts, when he was released, check which gate opened. It says it opened to the city. It opened to the city and he went to the house. So there are people that the angels are recognizing your rank and they respond according to your calling. Your calling and your vision, what God has shown you. And your assignment, it is determined by your assignment. When Paul was born again, he was taken into a house. Now, this is important. I was thinking about this this morning when I was meditating on this word. Ananias is told in the book of Acts 9, go to the street called Straight and you'll find a man there by the name of Saul. Go and pray for him to receive sight. Ananias said to the Lord Jesus, I had this man is persecuting the church. He says, go, because I'm going to show him the things he must suffer. I read that scripture many times. 
He must go and preach the gospel. But also, I have shown him the things he must suffer. What kind of a calling is that? Some of you, you are really suffering because of your calling. And you are rebuking the sufferings. But they are, determined, they are the determinants of your rank. Discern the kind of suffering, what is the purpose of it, before you rebuke it. Paul tried to rebuke his thorn in the flesh. But it was a portal. So your assignment is important. The assignment of Ananias was not to go to the nations and preach. The assignment of Ananias was to touch one person. One. 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 I put a status on Facebook this. If God calls you for one, stick to one. There was a man on the, on the campus, Free State University. He targeted one person and he left after six months. He led me to the Lord. He discipled me. There were many others, but I was the only one. He targeted me. When I was saved, now I'm saved. I realized the people that were around him, their purpose was to pray for me every day. It's like, let me use a wrong example. And please, I'm saying the wrong example. Please, ne? It's like Baneba Kopana every day whole lawyer for salvation. I don't know how to say it to me. They were there to bewitch me for salvation. They met every day in the morning to pray for me in the afternoon, in the evening. They had fastings for me. And now I ask them because I saw the prayer requests. I ask them why my name is because I saw for the first time each opened their wardrobe. It was my name, my name, my name. Then I said to them, why? Do you have my name in your wardrobe? He said, when we opened the wardrobe, he said, they called me by him, that name. That, that name. And I said, but is this thing not witchcraft? They laughed. I get up, so I just got saved. So I didn't know, but I mean, for me, it was a little bit, uh, it was creepy, man. So he said, no, no, in the morning, we, we had a circle. And you know, the moment he said, no, we held our hands together in a circle. <laughs> I, I really felt not okay. I said, no, then I don't want to be born again. But then I said, no, no, I like being born again, Mark. I don't like this thing. They said, he said to me, brother, we had no choice. We were told that there is a stronghold in your life. And if you don't deal with that stronghold, you will never be born again. And there are things that God says. Because I was the one who was teaching everybody. I was bad. There was no sinner like me on that campus. I, it was bad, man. No, man, it was bad, man. It was bad, bad. So the moment these people started to pray for me, it was a heavy weight on them. They had to rebuke demons of religion, demons of this Bluefontein demons and... Everything, sports, tampons, nuclear, you can name all the places of bloom. And I got saved. And that man looked for me, prayed for me, discipled me, did not waste his time. Sometimes I used to tell him, I'm studying, I have a test tomorrow. He said, no, I'm here for 13 years. I said, I need that. He said, no, I will pray for you. God will give you the wisdom. You will pass. He will disciple me, teach me. Because he used to tell me, I've got only a short time. I must be out of here. When he left, I was already leading about 60 people. That, you know, every Friday night, I used to bring people into a room called 234. Everybody I minister to, including the Dentuli City, they know room 234. I disciple everybody. Friday nights, Saturdays, I was there. I was discipling people. I, I win you. 
I'll go, I'll go to your hostel. And you know, ladies, most, they will say, they are not here. I'll tell another one. Tell that lady, you know, you are in the front. You are, they call people the reception, the foyer. Ne? I say, tell that person, there is a guy who left the chocolate here. Then I'll go outside and wait. And you see the person come. Yeah. I'll step. I say, I knew you are here. I'm the chocolate. <laughs> So I'll fetch them, take them to FGG 202. I'll disciple them. I was very aggressive. It was my assignment. Friday ministering there, it was a bit emotional for me because I, I could remember where it was the Senate Hall. The man who I grew under, Apostle Simpson Mizela, the late. In that Senate Hall there, it was my first honorary service. I honored him there. With another man who's late Bishop Mani. Assignment. Come on, say assignment. So your ring is determined by your assignment. That campus. I will really move from Korea to Madeleif. You will know the journey. Go around and pass Velvetia. Go and pass until I pass the uh, agriculture on the right side as if I'm going to gate five. I'll pass there, go up the bridge, go around the library, go to the fields, pray for some time. Go around Kilofeta, uh, the architecture, medical faculty, up until to Rosma Rain. That day, Charles, where did you stay? That was still Kayalami. Is it still Kayalami? Yes. Yeah, pass there. Go around the gate seven times a night. Speaking in tongues, seven. When the campus was, the security were only white people. Three, four o'clock in the morning, they used to stop me to say, nobody's allowed. I said, I didn't know nobody's allowed to pray. Until they, for two to three months, first two to three months, they will stop me. Until one day I said, you are disturbing my prayer. I don't know how many white groups, AWB, Estrajades, they will stop me at night. They will tell me, they will shoot me, they will beat me. I said, go ahead. Then I said, I'm praying. And Jesus said, I must pray. You kill me. You are taking me back straight to heaven. You are going back to hell. You know white people are religious. Okay, Hanan, Hanan, Hanan. So when a company you are working for is hostile, take time and pray there and break the walls of resistance. It's your assignment. Some of you, honestly speaking, you are working for a company that the owner is occultic. And your level of promotion, they know who you are. They know you are a child of God. Even when you have excellent skills you can present, some of you are lawyers, some of you are accountants, you are working for a company or a firm where your promotion is already predetermined by them, how far you will go. Break that resistance. In prayer. Go there early in the morning. Take time for one month, six o'clock. That's your prayer and fasting. Some of you, you don't really even have to take a fasting that's long. Just consistency, six o'clock, you are there in the morning. Monday, Alabaska. I speak the blood of Jesus. Father, I bring every principality down that is ungodly in this place. You pray that consistently. Believe you me, one day the wall will crush like the wall of Jericho. It's your assignment. So sometimes we want to do certain things, but the prayer level does not match the strength of the principality that is coming against you and your assignment. And I said, your ranking is determined by your mandate. That means the weight of your burden that the Lord has laid in your heart and in your life. He 
said that it is determined by your ability or gift. In the book of Luke 13, they were giving gifts according to their abilities. Some were giving two, some five, some one. So, according to your gift. Your rank is determined by your anointing. What is that that you are anointed for? It's the matter of grace. What is that that you are graced to do? We are not all graced the same way. I can't play instruments. I can't play keyboard. I can't play drums. I can't play any instrument. I'm not anointed in that area. I'm not graced for that. But others are. And don't fight people that are graced for something. May I say this? This is important. May I say this? We need to understand ability and anointing. When Saul was demonized, his advisor said, we can find someone who can play And he plays skillfully. David was not called because he was anointed. He was called because he was what? Skilled. It is the skill that brought David to Saul. It is the anointing that dealt with the demons. You are anointed. I don't doubt that. But are you skilled? When you are hired by your employer, do you have the skill? You go... Because you are anointed at church and you want to be employed based on your anointing, it doesn't work like that. Get the skill. Some of you honestly, on a certificate, go and get your diploma, go and get your degree. Some of you, the job you want, it needs two or three degrees. Go for it. No, they don't appoint us. They appoint political connections. Go and get the skill. Have a skill. It was the skill, the gift of David that brought him before Saul. When he was there, the anointing came. We did not build the church on the basis of the anointing. We got people that had the skill that I don't have. Some of you, God is going to promote you based on the skill. The anointing is going to keep you in that office and your character, of course. The anointing wraps on your gift and it elevates your gift to another level. I've seen in ministry people call anointing to and fro We can hear this person can sing and happy now there is anointing but there is no skill. We used to be told no, 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 we want anointing. No, we want your skill and your anointing. We don't just want your anointing without skill. And we don't want your skill also without the anointing. The skill ministers to our soul. Your anointing ministers to our spirit. We need that balance. Grace. On top of your anointing. (laughs) Will ensure. That. You will operate. In places. Where the limitation. Of your skill. Is giving the preference. Okay, let me repeat. You are skilled. Okay, we recognize your skill. 
And we recognize your anointing. But we realize also there is a limitation somehow. But people will recognize that your skill and your anointing, they have limitations. But let's give him a chance. That's grace. Let's give him a chance. Let's elevate him and see what he can do. This is where people are not sure. They know what you can do, but also they don't know what you can do. Also because you are a mystery, you are still hidden to yourself. You are, un, you are veiled, you are covered. It is only that platform grace will bring to that platform where what is hidden now is coming out. That even yourself, you didn't know that you have something. You cannot, even, even, even after you have done what you were supposed to be done, you are amazed by yourself to say, I didn't know I could do that. That's grace. You are anointed for something else. You are skilled in something else. But you don't know what else is still in you because you are a mystery. So God will create a platform where you can be able to do the things you have never done before. Here is David. He knows he's anointed. He is skilled in the sling throwing. But he doesn't know if he can stand next to Goliath. If he can do the job. But the testimony that he had gave him the confidence. He he never slayed a giant before. He only slayed a, a lion and a bear. But this time around, the, 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 the results, they carry weight. The assignment this time has got promotion. Some of you, honestly speaking, your current assignment is there to give you a testimony, personal testimony. But next to Goliath, God will elevate your testimony to another level. Your testimony will bring you promotion. But hold on to the personal testimony where nobody can see you, where nobody can give you a high five, where nobody can promote you. But David, in the presence of Saul, demons were kicked out. But Mamela, the people who recommended him saw him somewhere. He was in the fields playing next to the sheep. He was in the field playing next to the animals. But there were other people listening to David while he was playing in the middle of the night during winter. He was outside. He was not wearing royal robes. He was not wearing royal priesthood things. He was still a rough guy. He was smelling like sheep. But he was playing the strings where nobody could see where nobody could hear but there were people who were listening to him then they recommended him to say we know there is somebody he's valiant he's skillful he was still anointed what testimony people are having about you I, I told you, now at least I confessed my sin. The testimony people had about me for our soul. Hallelujah! So I could not be promoted. I was very vulgar. I was born in bloom, I couldn't help myself. If ever there was a competition between El Dorado Park and Cape Town Flats and Kimberley Insults, I was number one in the world. My age, nobody in Kimberley will beat me. Even Hayder Dahl. Makakishaw. Hayder Dahl. Hayder Dahl. Hey! Yo! <laughs> Hey, the dollar sports. <laughs> ay, 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 ay. No, 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 no. Near man. So I did not have a good testimony until I got saved. But a lot of people didn't believe me when I got saved. The first two years, nobody believed me. They came, said, No, that guy is saved. Man. <laughs> I know even the devil will be saved to that one. That's how bad I was. 
I was famous for wrong things. I was not famous. I was notorious. So when the grace came, honestly speaking, you know, even, you know, people, the way they will say things, this guy really saved. Hey, we'll see about it. I said to the students, they even gave me six, six months, then from six months, it was one year and then two years. There was a time when I started to say, Ma, is it really true that I'm saved? The way people, the, the testimony they had about me, it was very bad. Very, very bad. I had a very bad testimony. And I had bad taste when it came to certain things. So the grace, my goodness. The grace. Call the nobles alone. It's grace, honestly speaking. Because some of us, if God can remove the grace, yo, yo, I'm telling you, and I know some of you, the first thing you will run to, you will even pay for the years you have not been doing that. If God can remove the grace. I remember one guy was a Lord, you know, I don't know where grace and ability, the difference, you know. I, I don't know, but I work hard from morning till evening. I work twice as hard. I see success, you know. And I've been praying for this grace, for you to give me this grace, and I don't see you give me the grace for the next level. So I need to know. Is it, is it really your grace or my ability? God said, no, it's fine. Let me just, for a few seconds, let, let me just pull my grace. Just for a few seconds. And I want to see if you'll be able to wake up. Because you are saying you are waking up at 3 o'clock. I want to remove my grace. And let's see for just a few seconds if you will wake up. The guy repented on the spot. Because God said, you don't even see my grace when it's operating. <clears throat> and then ranking levels determined by cultivation. What is cultivation? It is when you come to that level and that space where the heavenly realities have become part of your spirit man. We live and walk in the mortal realm, in the natural realm, this side. You know, and this is a portal to the heavenly realms. There are realities here, according to the book of Colossians 3, verse 1 and 2, in the TPT, the Passion Translation. So cultivation means you, in prayer, when you are in the spirit, there are realities. You spend time until these realities they are deposited into your spirit. That's what cultivation is. They are deposited into your spirit. When you step out into the natural realm, you are no longer the same person as you were before you entered. There is something now you are carrying. It is no longer the same level when you started. It's like having a vision. Your vision has exploded, it's expanded. Your dream level is at another level. Your prayer level goes to another level. It is your revelation level in terms of the word. The same verse is rich that you read before. But this time there are things that are revealed to you. And cultivation is something in prayer that increases your boldness. You become bold. You become courageous. You start to believe God for something that you never thought you would. And all of a sudden, what people are saying, it can't even penetrate you because there is something on the inside of you. And as a result of that, your conviction level is not the same. So conviction is on the inside. But you don't just walk by that conviction. When your conviction goes outside, the realities that have been deposited here, they are beginning to come out of you. We call it a resolve. You have a resolve. You, you are stern. You are firm. You, what you believe God for, you, you know how to say no, even to the evidence outside. In the natural realm, whatever storm that comes, you are bold. You face it. You confront it. Not because things have changed, but there is something on the inside of you 
that has taken place. You don't have just a conviction. You have a resolve. Have you seen people that have a resolve? It's someone in boxing that are knocked out and they don't give up. They don't give up. You, you see it even in wrestling. Certain matches are predetermined, but the match in itself is not. So you can see when someone is, is beaten, but they have a resolve. You can see there is something on the inside of them. They, they have a resolve. And it's difficult for me to work with people that do not have a resolve. You say one thing today, you say something tomorrow. You say one thing today, you say something tomorrow. It's very difficult. A person with a resolve is stubborn in what they believe God for. They can stand for it. And I'm not talking about foolishness. Because there are people that are real, their resolve is on the level of foolishness. What can your rank do? I was recouping today. I've preached this before. Muruti Kifi says it's different. I don't know what's different. <clears throat> Few things. Number one, when you read the book of Acts, Peter had a rank that people decided that as he was walking on the street, they would put the sick and his shadow will heal him, will heal them. That's a rank. That's what a rank can do for you. Where you are not present yourself to do certain things. But people can do things in, in your rank and with your rank. Number two, it can give you city or nation's influence or impact. I spoke about Peter as he left the prison the gates that opened, the portal that opened, it was to the city. That is the rank. Other people, they just have openings, but it's just for local influence. All right. Then it will attract angelic rank. Daniel is an example. It's a clear-cut example. His rank in the spirit, his assignment was not to pray about the king's affairs. He prayed, when you read his prayer, he prayed for his nation to return back. The diaspora of his nation, Israel, in Babylon. So his assignment was not for just his protection. And I preached this before. Throwing him into the lion's den it did not change his destiny. It increased his testimony. Being thrown in the lion's den was meant to destroy him. It increased his testimony. There are times when people will throw you into the deep end to destroy you. It can determine your testimony for the second level. Don't curse the bad things that happen in your life. <clears throat> Oftentimes, they are for your testimony. And Daniel attracted angels. His rank, I'll call it the angelic rank. They began to be informed of things that did not belong in his mortal world, but they were connected to the destiny of the nation of Israel. That Daniel, the time you are here, your nation is here 70 years. Prepare to get out. Some of you, you've been in a situation or condition that you don't know when are you going to get out. Go back to the Lord and ask him, how long will I be here? How long will this thing take place? When God says it, obey. I was in the church 
<clears throat> deep life and God spoke to me. Two to three years before I left, a lot of pastors left. There was a move out. I didn't leave because everybody was leaving. I prayed and continued to serve until one day God spoke and said, your time is up. Because I loved the church, I didn't want to. I didn't want to leave. And I went to see the pastor, the senior pastor, the apostle, sat down with him and talked to him. I wanted to go um, to Zastron and plant the Deeper Life Church. At that time, my pastor, the local pastor, left. So I got a call from the general secretary, Dr. Lenong, who is now Prophet Lenong, who said to me, uh, please don't go out yet. Stay in bloom and pastor the church because the pastor left. So I started to pastor that church. I pastored it for one year, six months. During that one year, six months, my spirit was unsettled until I went for prayer and God spoke to me in 2002. And I waited until 2003 came. So when I knew the name of the ministry is Global Reconciliation Church, then I went for another level of prayer. That's why I said you pray to pray. Then I went to another level of prayer. Now that I had the name, I didn't start. I continued to pray. Until 2003 in January, I went for prayer and fasting. You know those January prayers. I went for another prayer and fasting. This was the longest one. It was a 40 days. I soaked the ministry in prayer. It was a very difficult fasting. 2003, then God spoke to me. Then I went, Dadara Masha was with me. We traveled to Velkom. We went to see Apostle. <laughs> he said to me, Son, you don't even know fiscal policy. You want to start the ministry. <laughs> I said, No. came back, I was hurt, disappointed, I felt rejected. Came home, Lord, what should I do? I went to see Pastor Johan, we spoke. Then I went to see Kati, his father. I spoke with him. I said, look, this is where I am. God is speaking, my father is saying no. Can, can I do this and then be under you for one year? Because I can't be headless. He said, yes. I went to Pastor Johan. I said, there is a pastoral association. Can I be part of it so that I can do what's right? The burning of the calling was too much. I will sleep and my eyes will refuse to close because I stayed in that church until I told him. Then I went for the second time. I said, I apostle, I can't. Can you please send someone to take over the church? You know, so here we are. I never dishonored him. During that time, he was, we were, I was working for God's kingdom in action. He was the chairperson of the whole organization. I served him. Even though I was out of the ministry, I served him. And I called him to come to Bloom to minister. He even went to preach at Yoffs. He preached in the morning service. He did our leadership training. He came to minister. We honored him. Before he passed on, God spoke to me. We took a patriarchal seat for him. I went to see him in Velcom. I never dishonored him as a father. Yes, at that time, it was difficult for him to let go of me as a son. But I had to obey God. So some of us, we need to understand. God can call you. If I say no, but God has spoken to you, it's up to you if I say no. For me, I'm sensitive to us callings of other people. I've released people before. 
I've blessed them. But there was someone who wanted to go and start. I said, don't. I said, please don't do that. He started. It didn't work out. He came for the second time. I said, please, can you just, you are not ready. I know you finished. He finished his uh, Bible school. He finished. He got his diploma. And I said to him, you have never served. But all he wanted, I remember the first time he came, he came. He used to come without a jacket. This time, he came to the church with a jacket and the Bible here. He was a man of God. And he said, um, he asked the usher there, where do I sit? He was a brother in the church. He, he was a brother in the church. He went to the Bible school. He came wanted to go to a theological seminar. I said, no, don't go to yours to study, to do ministry. They will teach you theology, but they're not going to prepare you for ministry. You will function well in a denominational setting. That training is not going to be good for you. He was insistent, but then he ended up going to another college, which they did, I believe, a good job in training him. But the problem was, when he was there, he didn't come. That, that, that college had a church. He started to attend church there. I thought that he's going there. He was still coming to the church, but he stayed there. Then the pastor of that church wrote a letter to me that we must use him. We must use him. Must use him. Must. That, for me, was a no-go zone area. So he came. Then I said to him, no. They said that we must use you. I said, can you please come and help to wash the toilets? So, me and Dr. Shabe used to wash toilets. He said to me, Apostle, are you serious? The Bible, was it? are you serious? <laughs> and the second time we had, a, we used to call Destiny Nights half, half night prayers. He came to the half-night prayer this time. He was prepared. And he said, um, you know, where, wherever God leads you, I'm ready tonight. Where he will lead you to use me. I'm ready tonight. I said, well, we were at the door. I said, you can stand here and usher people. You can be an usher. He left. He never came back. Next time he came back, he came back with a wife. Then he went out after some time. We tried to minister to him. He, he only came to see me in the office. He, he, he was not interested in attending church. It was like, and all of a sudden, I hear members started to call him pastor. pastor. I said, hey, I've never said he's a pastor. I've, I've not ordained him. He said, no, 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 call him by name. They said, no, 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 it's a routine. Hey, call him by name. And then he said to people, are you aware that apostle never attended any Bible school? He has no Bible training. He does not even have a degree, by the way. I've got diploma. It, he was telling the truth at that time. I still had my trick. Kosia. <laughs> wow. Hey, I felt it. <laughs> I felt it. I said, wow, ouch. <laughs> he said, even the way he delivers the weight, you can see it. He's very light. He has no weight. That time he came to see me, I had my master's. And he asked me, since the last time I was here, have you improved yourself? <laughs> I said, hey, you know what? Hey, it is rough. Ministry can keep you busy, you know? I said, Apostle, I want to advise you. <laughs> he left. When he came back, his wife was not there. He was staying with another man. There was no church.
I saw on Facebook that he's married. Nothing wrong with marrying the second wife. I'm still here with my matric. So I release and I bless people. But I check things when a person comes and say, I'm going to start. When you don't have a resolve, you go and start. You're going to quit because your resolve. But Zalwani, where I'm sitting and where I'm standing as an apostle and as a father, believe you me, I'm seeing pastors that during COVID, their churches died, that were bigger than ours. Ours. Bigger. But they never came out of COVID. Because the pastor did not have a resolve. There was no conviction of ministry. It's not that they were not anointed, they were not graced. But there was no conviction of the call. We are graced. It's been grace. And I want to say that. None of our strength, not that we are better than anyone. It's grace. It was grace. It's still grace. It will continue to be grace. The moment we kill the grace factor, we kill the God factor. May it not happen with any of us. Amen. You are ranked. And your rank attracts not just angels. It also attracts demons and principalities. What you carry attracts everything. Wrong, good, bad, ugly. There was a war going on where Daniel woke up in the morning, went to the king's chamber, served the king. If I can just ask Pastor H just here to squat. Look at me. You see, as he came to serve the king at the level where he was, above him in the spirit, there was a war going on. There were principalities. There were angels fighting. He is serving the king in the natural realm. In the spirit realm where he could not see there was a war going on that had to do with him. There was a war. He will intercede for the nation. As he was interceding for the nation, he will impact the war going on here. And those that were warring, they had an assignment to war but also to inform him. Let me say that again. You can go on with your business in your life as normal. But are you aware there is a possibility in your life there is a war going on above you? Can you discern? Yes. Can you enter a portal where that war is going on? Yes. Can you participate in the real arm where that war is going on? Yes. Are you doing that right now? It's something else. Are you graced to operate there? Yes. Are you anointed for it? Yes. Are you affirmed for it? Yes. You are affirmed by the blood. You are affirmed by the call. Thank you, Murud. Your rank, the level where the devil is defeated. And lastly, you can win wars without a fight. The book of 2 Kings chapter 6 where Elisha was under attack and he won without a fight. Let me read the last scripture. Did I open the Bible? 
<laughs> I didn't open the Bible there. We have not read any scripture. Because here, <laughs> let me continue next week on rank. Then we can quote the scripture. <laughs> Wow. Hey, I've never shared without opening a scripture. I'm sure some of you, he is unbiblical. <laughs> Shall we stand, please? I hope that I've brought everything. Yeah, but I think next week, let me finish because we have to talk about breaking rank and keeping rank. And and the Lord Jesus Christ when rank was demonstrated. Hallelujah. Shall we raise our hands? I want you for a few minutes just talk to your father. I don't know what God said to you. I don't know your convictions and your resolve today. What is it that God wants you to be to have a resolve? Just pray for a few minutes please. Reboosh kalabashita. Nibashata rabaske libos kalabashanda. Uribe bebe 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 bos kalabashi kalabas kalabandeni. Oh shanda rabaso tolo boska. Uriba baba bala basi kere bebe le bosanda. Uriba baba la bakura mash kalabaske le boska. Uribe bebe 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 le bosi kiri bebe le bosha. Rabasa karabas kulubos kalabaske. Come on, push it in prayer. Your rank is at stake here. Don't lose your rank. Don't lose your rank. Don't lose your rank. Madeke reboshi tarabaska. Neba baba balabasi eke reboshi ndarabaska. Don't lose your rank. Don't lose your rank. Don't lose your rank. Don't lose your position. Don't lose your authority. Don't lose your conviction. Don't lose your resolve. Don't lose your assignment. Don't lose your mission. Don't forget why God has called you. Don't forget why God Saved you, redeemed you. Don't lose your redemptive purpose. Mandaraba shikele bebe de bos. Ah, 
Yes, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Shalabase Kelebos Kalabasko. Come on, there are no words. Yes, Lord. There's nothing else. Oh, there are no words. There's Nothing else I have thanks to you. Oh, oh, oh. the hand of words is There's nothing else I have to feel. Oh, 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 oh,
Come on, give Jesus a big hand of praise. Hallelujah. Let's raise our hands and have a corporate prayer and say, Father, help me not to lose my rank in Christ. Heavenly Father, teach me how to increase my rank. Teach me how to keep rank. Teach me, give me the wisdom that I should not break rank in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Now let's bow our heads as we close our eyes, please. You might be here, you have never given your life to Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life. I want to pray with you. You might be here, you have never given your life to Jesus as Lord and Savior of your life. I would love to pray with you. Ranking is in Christ. You can walk around without rank. Don't be rankless in life. Jesus Christ gives us the rank. I want to pray with you for him to be the Lord and Savior of your life. Will you give me the, uh, the honor and the opportunity to pray with you? You will you be kind to raise your right hand as I'm going to pray with you to say, Apostle, it's me. I need to receive Jesus as Lord and Savior of my life. Thank you for those hands. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you for those hands. You might be here. You are not sure where you stand with Jesus. Today, make sure. Make sure today where you stand. You can also lift up your right hand. I want to pray with you. Thank you for those hands. God bless you. You might be here also. You made the prayer before. You backslided. You're a child of God. But you want to fix things with the Lord today. He's not going to ask you where were you? Where have you been? What did you do? He just wants to welcome you. You can also raise your right hand. And we can pray with you as you come back to the Father, to the Father's love. Amen. Thank you for that hand. Thank you. Can you, can all those people who lift their hands, can you please lift it one more time? I want to see it. God richly bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Will you be kind? Come and join me in front here. I want to pray with you. Give us the opportunity to come and pray with you. Please bring them. Arba celebrate them. Let's celebrate them. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on, somebody. I smile. Good. Smile. Good, good. 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 Amen. Let's raise our hands, please. Just stretch forth your hands to them before the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. You who are standing in front here, please follow me in this prayer. Join me in this prayer. Say, Lord Jesus, thank you. I'm here. Thank you. And turn to my heart. Be the Lord and the King of my life. Your word says, when I believe with my heart and confess with my mouth that you died and you rose again on the third day, I shall be saved. Today, I'm saved. Today, I'm saved. Thank you for writing my name in the book of life. Thank you that my name is in the book of life. Lord Jesus, thank you for washing me. My, your blood washing my sins. In the name of Jesus, Heavenly Father, thank you for giving me life eternal in Christ Jesus. Amen and amen. Let me pray. Father, thank you for every one of them. Some of them are coming here for the second, the third time, fourth time. We understand when that happens, there is a calling in their lives. We don't despise this moment. We don't despise this, this opportunity, but we want to say thank you. In Jesus' mighty name, Father, give us the wisdom, grant us the grace to teach, to train, to 